the bell icon to turn on notifications. Spatial data, also known as geospatial data, refers to records in the data set that have a geographic aspect. Spatial data can be the location of a store, the distance between two bus stops, or the boundaries of a state. Altrix offers this spatial tool set in Designer for you to be able to derive meaningful insights and information from this type of data. In this series of Spatial Analytics for Beginners, we will make use of the three main types of spatial objects, points, line, and polygons. Points are the simplest type of spatial object. They consist of x and y coordinates, or the longitude and latitude of a place. This can be in the form of the location of a company, a customer, or any points in a map. Since it has no geometrical characteristics, we can also say that a point has no dimension. If we connect two or more points together, we can form a line. Lines are visible when you trace a bus route or when you measure a distance between two locations. A line has a specific starting point as well as an ending point, which can also give us the length of the line itself. This type of spatial object has a dimension of 1. Polygons are comprised of lines that are connected to form a closed two-dimensional area. They have a measurable perimeter and are often used to declare the boundaries of a country or show the trade area of a certain store branch. Let's look at this data set that contains eight delivery locations. Our source file is a CSV, so all of its fields are currently in V-string data type. But we do have geographical data here, which is the longitude and the latitude. In order to use spatial processing on these coordinates, we need to convert it to a spatial object first. To do so, we will use a Create Points tool. Drag the tool from the Spatial Tool set and connect it after the Select tool. The Create Point tool converts our points from a string or numeric data type into a spatial point object. This is always needed before the data is processed by the rest of the spatial tools. To configure the Create Point tool, we need to map it to the appropriate fields first. Indicate the longitude field on the X drop-down list and the latitude on the Y field. Once done, we have three radio buttons where we can choose the appropriate format of our incoming string coordinates. Select fields are lat slash long floating point if your points are in decimal format or select fields are lat slash long integers x 1 million if it is in whole numbers or select fields are projected floating points if they are displayed in a geographic projection. In this case our string coordinates have decimals so we are going to choose fields are lat slash long floating point. Once done add a browse tool after the create point tool so that we can view our points in a map. Finally, run the workflow. Looking at the results window, the tool has added a new column called Centroids, which now contains the points that were converted to spatial objects format. The points are also now visible in the Browse Tools Map tab, wherein Altrix has plotted the locations of each point. You can click on a specific record in the Browse Results window to highlight which point it is on the map or you can single click a point in the map to see which record it is associated with. In this tab, you can also zoom in and zoom out to increase and decrease the map area by using the zoom buttons on the browse tool or by using your mouse scroll button. You can also just zoom to a certain point by selecting one or more points or objects then click on the zoom to selection button. To reset it back to the default view, Click on the Reset View button. Altrix also has several base maps that you can choose from. It currently has the following reference layers for the map image. Altrix Light, Dark, Satellite, Satellite Streets, and Altrix Streets. Now that we have our spatial points in place, let's try to connect their delivery route using a PolyBuild tool. The PolyBuild tool will take our spatial point object and create a polygon or polyline from them by connecting each point with a line in a specific order. Drag a poly build tool from the spatial palette and connect them after the create point tool. 
In configuring the poly build tool, there are three different types of build or shape that we can generate from the points. It can be a convex hull, a sequence polygon, or a sequence polyline. Let's look at a sequence polyline first. Set the build method to sequence polyline. Then set the source field to centroid. This will be the field that contains the points. If you have a group field that represents the poly object, you can set it here on the next dropdown. Let's leave this to none. Then the sequence field will be the column that contains the numeric order of how the lines will be connected. Let's set this as delivery underscore sequence. Once done, add a new browse tool after the poly build, then run the workflow. As we look at the map tab of the browse tool, the poly build tool has connected each line, thus creating a delivery route from the first delivery point up to the last. The whole polyline object is now saved into one record, as we can see in the results window. Let's try a sequence polygon next. Add a new poly build tool and connect it to the create point tool. Set its build method to sequence polygon. Then for the rest of the drop down list, we will populate it in the same method as the sequence polyline. Set the source field to centroid group field to none and the sequence field to delivery underscore sequence. After that, add another browse tool, then run the workflow. The output as plotted on the map has formed a polygon and takes up the area inside the lines that was created, same as earlier. This also resulted as one record or one whole spatial object. Finally, let's look at how a convex hull is created. Add a new poly build tool to the canvas and connect it to the create point tool. In the configuration, Set the method to convex hull. This method does not need any sequence field on its configuration, so the last drop down has been grayed out. Let's set the source field to centroid and the group field to none. Then add another browser tool after it and run the workflow. Same as earlier, the plotted output results in a polygon shape and covers the entire area inside the shape. This is a bit similar to the sequence polygons output. To clearly check the difference of the two, let's use a join tool to blend them in one map view. Add a join tool to the canvas, then connect the left input to the sequence polygon poly built, and the right anchor to the convex hull poly built. Then add a browse tool to the output J anchor. In configuring the join tool, set the join method to join by record position. Then, in its embedded select window, Rename the spatial object from the left into sequence polyline and rename the right to convex hull. Once done, run the workflow. The shape in red is from the sequence polyline, while the one in green is from the convex hull. Notice that the sequence polygon has included the point that made a concave shape in its middle, but the convex hull did not. This is because the concave hull only takes the lines that are on the outermost part of the shape, meaning it will never contain any concave angles, so it will never turn in on itself. Sequence polygon, on the other hand, takes all its points into consideration. Aside from taking in spatial object or geographical data from source files, we can also create a spatial object in the designer itself by using a map input tool. The map input tool lets us create a point line or polygon either by drawing or selecting points in the map. Drag a map input tool from the in slash out tool set into the canvas. You can add a new spatial object by using either of the two modes. You can draw a point slash line slash polygon directly using your mouse cursor into the map by selecting the draw mode. Then select which spatial object you will draw from the icons in the gray tab on top of the map. After that, you can proceed on drawing it directly into the map. Each click on your mouse will be considered a point in location and it will automatically create a line from your next point if you are creating a line or a polygon. Double click on it if you are closing a polygon. Once you've finished drawing the object, you need to specify a label name for it on the pop-up text box. Select mode selects points from a reference YXDB file. Select your reference file first by going to reference YXDB option then click on the File Browse option to navigate to your file. 
Once done, the spatial points line or polygon that is on your file will be plotted on the map. Select the icon on your grade tab for your method of selecting points, click for selecting single points, and box for multiple selections. The points you highlighted will be in green and will be the ones to be included on the data set. You can also change its label field to something more indicative to help you choose which points you will use for your spatial analysis. You can also set a default reference map for any spatial workflows by navigating to Options, User Settings, Dataset Defaults, and setting the reference base maps. The most recent vintage maps on the list will reflect the latest version of the map in Altrix. You can also set a default location for map inputs by setting the location in default location for map input slash question in the same options window. It will show a new map window where you can pan and zoom to your desired area. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.